So, good afternoon. I want to talk today in a conversation in prayer with Nelly. God introduced a solution to some things that we were trying to figure out, you know, apart from what we talked about earlier, but just just business and things. And the word that God revealed, which we didn't think about, was covenant. Like things work in line with covenant. And I was like, okay, I think I understand it, but obviously I haven't. So help me out. And he said to me, think about the nature of man. The nature of man is to break covenant. The nature of God is to keep covenant. This is serious. Um, <clears throat> so I was on YouTube last night and watching shorts. And this guy got on there and he was talking about how the church is following the traditions of the slave masters and using the Bible as a tool to subjugate even amongst his own. And he was making some good points. So I started listening like, hmm, okay, that's, 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 I can see that. And he started explaining how the word of God, or as the, as the court, what, as they say the word, and he began to keep talking. And I was like, okay, this is getting a little bit to the edge of the, the line here. How far is this guy going to go over the line? And with good biblical knowledge and good understanding and explanation and very Christian tone and philosophy, he veered so far over. And I was like, come on, come on. I know where you think. I think I know where you're going. I hope you're not. But I think you are. And he just made that one little slight step over the line that says, and for those people who think that the Bible is the only source of communication or connection to God, and then he began to break that down. Now, I didn't shut him off. I wanted to hear what he had to say. Okay. Right, people hear from God before they know the Bible. I know I heard from God before I knew the Bible. God didn't speak to me through the Bible because I didn't know the Bible. He spoke to me in my sinful state where I was, and he reached out to me and he touched me according to the religious traditions I was trying to find him in, but I was trying to find him. But in the course, he led me to him. And for those who don't know, I, I went I went from Nation to Islam. I didn't stay long there. I didn't like what they were talking about. I was Sunni Muslim. I went from that. I went to Buddhist. From Buddhist, I went to Hare Krishna. From Hare Krishna, I went. I didn't stay with the Jehovah Witnesses for 10 minutes talking to them. I was like, we good. We good. You worse than the Christians. And I thought the Christians were the worst, but I felt like they were even worse than the Christians. I was like, you guys are even more confused than Christians are. So I don't want to have nothing to do with you. And so then I just said, well, you know, God, it's just going to be me and you. And I just make up my own thing as I go along. Right. And I, for those of you who know my story, I was going through these serious demonic attacks at this point. Spiritual entities appearing to me in all kind of mess. And in, in one of these throws, in one of these battles, the voice of the Lord spoke. And said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father by me. And then his presence was there. And I got on my knees before the Lord and I got saved in my living room. So through the course of going these other routes, seeking God for truth, he led me to truth. Because you won't find him and try to be comfortable in where you are, you find him in pursuit of him. I'll say it again. You don't find God or find the truth in being comfortable where you are. You find him in pursuit of him. Huh. That is a strong statement 
because it means even Christians and even some of us here can get very comfortable in finding God in pursuit of our own belief at this point. And we're no longer in pursuit of him and his truth. I've learned some things. I've been in church for 20 years. This is what I've decided. And I'm good here. And don't nobody mess with me. And doing that, you begin to cross that line where you're not in pursuit of him anymore and his truth. You're just pursuit, in pursuit of the relationship that you've already acquired and want to keep. Can, can, can I talk a little bit or this this bar in here? Am I, am, am, I in, am I talking to the right people? Am I in the right room? So listening to this man, I didn't jump at me and just judge me. Ah, oh, he's a devil. I said, let me hear him out. And I can hear that he was making some valid points. But then he began to say things like, we have to embrace our this group and our that group. And I was like, okay, no, I, I agree with that. But not by these bigger cool laws. And I'm like, okay, you're... Mm. Now, let me just say this to you. It'd be easy for me to point a finger at him and say, this man is off into some demonic thing and he's totally off the base. No, this sounds like a man who's been disturbed by traditional religion that the slave owners created and wants to get us free from it but again there's that line that you step over when you begin to say that the bible is not the infallible word of god and you start trying to then create you know with your wisdom and insight a sub logic i was watching tbn a long time ago donnie mckirkin was on there and he was interviewing steve harvey and Steve Harvey was there and he was sharing his testimony. And it was getting great audience response. And he said throughout the conversation as they were applauding and, and Donnie McCurkin was nodding in agreement. He made a statement. Your church people got this thing too narrow. You need to widen it up a bit. It's too narrow. And even though I understood what he said and the whole audience applauded him as he said it tearfully, I said, but the scripture said, wide is the road that leads to destruction and now is the way of the path of righteousness and few find it. So I would have, if I was sitting there with Donnie, I would say, respect that brother. I hear what you're saying and I know what you mean. We can be too, but God don't widen it so that it fits us. We got to get on the road. That's his road. So let's, let's keep some balance here and respect. Just because you're a celebrity, you don't get to come on my show and say whatever you want to say that sounds good to the church. This brother was teaching that there are alternatives to the relationship with God. And to that I say, no. But I do say that God's road is wide to those who are seeking and don't know as they get funneled in to who he is and what his truth really is. Does that make sense? God's reach is broad. But then once you say yes, he, he brings you home to I am the way the truth, and in life, no one comes unto the Father except by me, which is the exact verse Christ said to me in the living room that day. He never saw it in the Bible. He spoke it. And from that point, I said, okay, you're pushing me to a singular path. And you're pushing me to the path of the people that I would least like. So there must be some truth to what these idiots are saying. but." I need to learn now how to separate myself from a religion. And that was a long ongoing fight and it doesn't cease to exist. So here's where we come to the message today. This is the longest I've gone setting up the message. 
God said to me, when he started going across that line, good intentions, whatever, he made a decision at some point to break covenant. He made a decision at some point that what pleases my intellect feels better than what you're telling me I need to do. And the message that the people want to receive from me is more important than the message that I'm supposed to be delivering to them. Then he went on and said, his mentor was Carlton Pearson. I said, and there we go. And we have landed. Who don't know who Carlton Pearson is? Does anybody not know that who that is? Okay. A lot of people don't. Well, let me just tell you this. In his day, in the beginning of TBN, Carlton Pearson was the Joel Osteen or the T.D. Jakes of that time. He was very, very big. He started these Azusa Street meetings and there was the healings and miracles and all of these mighty moves of God. You can look them up. They did a fake movie about him. They did a lot of lying in it and twisted a lot of the truths because the truths were recorded and on the net, internet you can find it. But I think they did something about any given Sunday or whatever it is. They did on Netflix this movie about it. Total a bunch of BS. But my point is he with all of his influence and power, decided one day that you don't need to be saved. Jesus already died for the world, so therefore you don't have to confess him as Savior. You don't have to be saved or follow Christ to be in God's kingdom. And he literally like upended the gospel in such a way he broke covenant. He said, I understand these truths, but at this point in my life, this truth makes more sense to me. It feels better to me. The Bible said, in the end, many will be deceived. And somebody put in, in one of their posts, on one of their videos online, I said, you got to watch these YouTube preachers. He said, Bible says in the end, even the elect will be deceived. It says, does not say that. It says, many will be deceived if possible even the elect, if possible, meaning it's not, right? Covenant was broken. Intentionally, unintentionally, that's not the point. The point is, at some point, they decided that what they understand is more important than what he said. Without the desire to be corrected. Because we can do that. We can make that mistake even. But we always have to be malleable. And we always have to be pliable. We also have to, always have to be willing to let God put us back on the track that he desires for us. How long you can stray off the track before it becomes a problem? That's between you and God personally. But those of you that know like I know. It's a period of time that he'll let it slide before he'll say, okay, you know, when you look at the whole situation with Combs and all of this, it's like, you got saved, bro. You went to church. You, you learned the truths. Mr. Kelly, same situation. How long do you think you can keep getting away with this before, as they say in the old people say, the chickens come home to roost? Like how long before the enemy comes to collect? How long? Well, I began to talk to God about this covenant thing because I said, I know this is something that's very important to you. And I'm realizing that maybe I don't understand it as thoroughly as I should. And he kind of giggled. And said, you don't understand anything as thoroughly as you should. <laughs> That's why I tell you to stay in my word and study my word to show yourself approved. You don't understand anything as thoroughly as you should. But, you know, just keep on showing up and I got you. <laughs> All right. So go with me to Deuteronomy chapter seven. And like I said, this is probably the longest setup I've ever given. But I really want to make sure I brought some things home here.
So starting at verse one. In Deuteronomy chapter seven, it says, when the Lord your God brings you into the land which you are entering to possess and has plucked away the many nations before you, before you, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perjacites, and Hivites, and the Jebusites. That's a lot of sites. Seven nations greater and mightier than you. So I wanted to point out, he named seven nations and he named seven nations that are mightier than them. So I want you to point to, to just to make this as a point and put this in front of your face. You're listening. He's saying, I'm delivering you from people. There's people that you know that you can take and you can take down and you can beat them. And, and you just do what you want to do. Like I was thinking about in this situation. I know I can handle this. One, two, three, if you let me. He said, yeah, but there will come a time that you are brought in front of nations and situations and people that are more powerful than you, and you don't have the ability to do anything with that. But trust me. Are you listening to me? We need to really get to that place that we stay dependent because there will be, if you want to walk in God's greatness, opportunities and situations that confront you that are more powerful than you and people greater than you. And if you can't do with it within your network or your power, then what are you going to do? So not only did he bring them into a nation, uh, said that I will run out nation that's great. And he says seven of them that I will run out. Are you listening? So I would just, if I was you just take a minute and say, God, prepare me to trust you when it's beyond my power. Prepare me to stand and watch you when I cannot defeat the foes that come against me. This is big. And when the Lord your God, verse 2, and when the Lord your God gives them over to you and you smite them, you must utterly destroy them. But he has to give them over to you. He has to give them over to you. Because they're more powerful than you. So he has, to, he has to give them over to you. You will smite them and you will make no covenant with them or show no mercy to them. Now, I used to look at this like, so you just want me just to come in and just kill them and wipe them out? You said, wait a minute. In this case, I'm not telling you, you kill them. I'm telling you. When you get the position to put them down, you put them down. You get rid of them. You cut ties. You sever relations. Whatever the case may be. And you don't make a covenant. Don't feel sorry. Don't feel guilty. Don't feel like, well, you know, they haven't been around a long time. You know, all those kind of things that you do that he says, don't make a covenant. Don't ask me to deliver you and then go back and make a covenant. Don't say, Lord, take them out of my life if you don't want them there. And then he presents the opportunity for you to smite them. And then you turn around and make a covenant with them because of your emotions, because of some financial thing, because of whatever. You don't do that. You put them down and you put them down for good. So many people here and you know what I'm talking about. And you'll come with a situation and I say, well, did you pray about it? Yeah. What did God tell you? God told me, you know, I need to cut them off. I need to not stop helping them. I need to do this. So why are you, haven't you done that? Well, because, you know, well, you know, I mean, I know them and, you know, we are related. And it's like, well, wait a minute. You're making covenant with the people God set you free from. You don't want to have this conversation? This is too much for you So he says, when I deliver them into your hands, even the ones that seem stronger than you, destroy it. Destroy it. And don't make a covenant. Make no covenant with them and show no mercy. Oh, but I'm a Christian. I got to walk in love. And I got to, not when you, God gave you instruction to walk away. Not when God gave you destruction to move forward. No, you don't. Well, you know, I was going to move, but you know, my finances got funny. And I, okay, wait, 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 wait. 
Did God tell you to move? Yeah. Then your finances got funny because you ain't obey because the enemy will attack you at your finances so that you can't move. But you still should be going forward to move. You don't say, okay, well, I guess I'm not moving. I'm going to stay here and make covenant. I'm not talking to anybody specifically. I'm not. I'm, I'm relating things from my own mind and my own past. Okay, when God said go forward, he meant go forward. Don't go back and try to see if you could fix it in the process. You go forward. If God fixes it in the future, that's God's business. But if he instructed you to break covenant, break ties, and go forward, he wants you to do that. I'll leave it right there. You should not make marriages with them. Your daughters, your daughter, you shall not give to their sons, and you should not take their daughters for your sons. For they will turn you, your sons, to following from following me, that they may serve other gods. So you will anger the Lord. Hmm. The anger of the Lord will be kindled against you and he will destroy you quickly. I want you to pay attention to this. This is all about covenant. This is not about, I don't want you marrying them. I don't want them marrying you. I don't... He's saying, I made a covenant with you to deliver you. And when I make a covenant to deliver you, you can't go back into the world and try to reintroduce yourself to the covenant that existed that I delivered you from. You can't marry their sons and their son and their daughters and, and, and let them marry yours. You have to break the covenant. I mean, break the covenant. Break that relationship with them or break your covenant with them to have your covenant with God. Break, maybe not them. Let me use this. Break your covenant with it. To have your covenant with God. Break your covenant with that. To have your covenant with God. Whatever the case may be. Don't ask God for a covenant deliverance. And then compromise it. By breaking out of the covenant. Is that simple enough? <clears throat> so now I'm going to verse 8. No, no, not verse 8. Verse 5. But this is how you should deal with them. You should break down their altars. You should dash the pieces their pillars. And heal down their symbols of God, the goddess Asherah. And burn their graven images with fire. Don't even keep the artifacts as a collectible. Destroy it all. Did you hear what I just said? Don't even keep the remnants of what that relationship, that situation, whatever it may be was. Destroy it all. This is important. So many times people will come to you and come to me and they'll come to you with a problem that they're facing. They'll come to you for counsel because they know you're good for counsel. How many of you know people that come to you all the time? They look at you as the counsel person and they come to you and say, you know, I want to talk to you. You seem to always have the answer, right? There's a very serious thing I need you to be comfortable with, care, and, and I mean, not comfortable, cautious about spiritually. A lot of people don't come to you to be ministered to. You listening? They come to minister to you. They have an assignment. So they come to you to dump their problem on you, not because they want to change but because they want to now fill your spirit with their disease or their infection and then walk away and leave you resting in the pollution that they've already decided they're going to do. Have you talked to people over and over again and they still the same situation, they still with him, they still with her, they still pursuing him, they still pursuing her, they still pursuing that job, they still and and you and you know they came to you and just loaded on you how unhappy they are and how uncomfortable they are, but they've already made up their mind that they're there and they've already decided to break covenant. So you need to be very mindful when people come to you to search your spirit and say, Yeah, I ain't got nothing to give you. Because I already know that you don't really want anything you pretending to ask for. 
again, it sounds insensitive, but they're trying to sow the spirit of covenant breaking onto you that they're already decided in. They're just trying to leave a seed. Let's go. Burn their images, hew down their symbols, don't even collect anything. It's a good collectible. None of that. Get rid of all of it. Hmm. Wow. Six. For you are a holy set apart people to the Lord, your God. The Lord, your God has chosen you to be a special people to himself out of all the people on the face of the earth. If I had known this work so well, I've been taking my glasses off to read a long time ago. The Lord did not set his love upon and choose you because you were more in number than any other people. For you were fewest of all the people. But because the Lord loves you and because he would keep the oath which he has sworn to your fathers, the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondage from the hand of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Now, let me just say this. Wow. This, he didn't pick you because you were the smartest. He didn't pick you because you were the strongest. He didn't pick you because you were large in number. He picked you because he made a promise to your forefathers. What does that mean? Covenant. He's keeping his covenant. And he's asking you to keep yours. He's saying, listen, I've gone out of the way over centuries and centuries, generations and generations to keep a covenant alive to a bunch of people that usually don't even keep covenant. I'm asking you to keep covenant. What I'm realizing is covenant breaking is probably one of the most serious offenses in the Bible because every sin that I can point to aims at it. And I never really thought of it. I always thought about covenant as you shake my hand, I shake your hand. You like me, I like you. You like to go to the movie? Oh, wow, me too. You know, but that's not a covenant. A covenant is I lay down my life for you, you lay down your life for me. That's a covenant. That's a covenant. I was on my job one time and it was, it was when I was working in the tech world and this one guy I was working with, he was, he could be such an idiot. And I was saying to the guy I was working with what an idiot this guy was and what a pain in the behind he could be. And he looked at me and he sighed and he kept working. And I said, what did I say? He said, now he was a farming guy. And he said to me, I know he can be trying. But his family and my family have a covenant. And if we were in my country, I would be ready to kill you for what you just said. I was like, whoa. That, you ready to go to jail for somebody? He said, but that's his covenant. Not, and I mean, I never heard that again or before, but that sat with me. If you heard him, you hurt me. You talk about him, you talk about me. You go against him, you go against me. That's covenant. He said, we have a covenant. And it didn't even say he had a covenant with the person. He said, our families have it. it. Seemed like he didn't like the guy too much himself. But we have a covenant. Our families have a covenant. And you speaking against him is offensive to me. That's the power of something like that. God is saying, listen, if I've turned my back on them, so do you. If I don't like them, neither do you. You don't make adjustments or exceptions because you want to be accepted. If I tell you I have no place with them, then you have no place with them. 
But God, you know, maybe if I spend time with them and I could change them. And so you are making a decision at that point to say to God, I'm breaking covenant with you because this seems more beneficial to me. You think you're gaining something from it. I don't know what it is. It's, it's definitely not because you're trying to win them to God. Usually you're trying to win them to God because it's something out of the relationship that you want. So you don't want to have to get rid of them. So now you're going to play that I want to win them to God card. I'm not saying anybody on here. I'm just saying people, whoever listens to this later, they know who they are. You know, I want to win them to God because you benefit from that, not because God said to you, I want you to win them. Again, nobody here has ever done that. I'm just saying it happens, you know. So if you know anybody who's done that, you can just kind of pass that on to them and let them know that they shouldn't do that. Okay? All right. <laughs> so I just... Um, Verse 9, no recognize and understand, therefore, that the Lord your God is the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love and mercy to those who love and keep his commandments for a thousand generations. So notice, notice, if you didn't notice before, God's a covenant keeping God. Well, if he's a covenant keeping God, if that's in his title, covenant keeper, I, I love all the, you know, Jehovah Shalom and, and Jehovah Shalom and Sick Canoe and, and Jehovah Jireh, but God, the covenant keeper, he's a covenant keeping God. That's one of his names. And if he keeps covenant, he keeps covenant with people who don't break covenant. And if you break covenant, then you've broken covenant with him. He keeps covenant. So I begin to say, okay, this gentleman is preaching a strong word. And then he veers off into this gray area that logically makes sense. And God said he's stepping out of the lines of covenant right now. Hmm. He's creating a covenant in his own image and likeness. Okay. He's chosen based on whether he's been hurt or offended or just get some more offerings, whatever the case may be, to go down this line and follow this way of thinking because it ministers to him. Okay. Notice he don't talk about my spirit. Yeah, I noticed that. Notice he doesn't talk about my anointing. Yeah, I noticed that. Notice he doesn't talk about my guidance. Yeah, I noticed that. So, okay. So with that said, there's a whole church out there now of people that are Christian right up to that door. And they get to that door of the Holy Spirit and they get to the door of a covenant of God. And they go, yeah, my human intellect does not allow me to go there. It doesn't serve my purpose. Our calling to a covenant keeping God is to be a covenant keeping people. My goal to serve my covenant keeping God is to be a covenant keeping person. God, whatever or whoever offends you, offends me. And whoever attacks you, attacks me. And if you don't like them, I don't like them. And if you're not friends with them, I'm not friends with them. And that right there is a thing that we in this generation do not know or understand. You can't break covenant with me and then be a friend of my friend. You can't break covenant with God and be my friend. Will I talk to you? Sure. Will God give me the opportunity to minister to you sometime? Sure. But overall, you're not his friend. You're not my friend. You hate God. You hate me. Because I love God. And you can't go against God and say you're okay with me. That don't mean I'm going to be mean and nasty and anything else. 
but it means I won't have any covenant with you. I can't. I won't. So, when you go forward for this time forward, please listen to me. Start to judge your relationships and your situations and your circumstances more by covenant than by feeling. And, you know, when they seem like a nice person, where's the covenant? What has daddy said? Because that will make it very clear. Do you love my daddy? I can't stand Christians. I can't stand Christianity. I can't stand Jesus. I'll stand them out. Okay, well, then we good. And last but not least, and I'll say this on the political side, Donald Trump thing. I said, God, I don't want to vote for either one of these people, but I don't want to sit home and do nothing. And what should I do? And God said to me, how many covenants has Trump kept? And I went, wow. He breaks covenant consistently. Okay. Has the man repented for anything he's done wrong? No. He said, you may not know what Kamala has done or has not done. But you clearly know what he has. And anyone who chooses to follow in the name of Christianity, this man has come to this reality. Now, you don't have to agree with this. I'm telling you where I stand. I'm not telling you how to vote. He's a cult leader, is what God told me. He's a cult leader. And I said in the end that the church will follow anything that looks like a messiah. They will go run after him, except the elect will be deceived. He said, you cannot be a part of a cult. That's clearly a cult. For any other reason, forget political things, forget, well, he promises that he's going to give us more jobs. Well, then I'm breaking covenant to join a cult leader because I think he's going to give me something that benefits me. I don't trust Kamala any better. Don't get me wrong. But I'm not going to willingly join a cult. And God told me he's a cult leader. And those are cult followers. And you cannot be a part of a cult. And based on that and that alone, don't have to like Kamala. Whatever she does in office that's wrong or right, gay this and whatever that, that can be overturned in four more years. But what the cult leader will do is destroy everything. And then that stuff is almost irreparable. So I'm saying, and I'm putting it on message so it can be heard, Donald Trump's a cult leader, and I cannot follow a cult. And yes, I did vote for him in the beginning, but I would never vote for him again, and he's a cult leader. And that's the word I got. Take it or leave it. And if somebody want to get in the comments and start some mess, I'm, I, I, it'll be about time. Listen, I'm not following a known cult leader. I put it out there. I said it, and I don't take it back. May the word that you heard bring God's blessings to you. I'm not breaking covenant.